Okay, this is for Maggie for uh, Robin Eagle Songs channel. Uh, my Wi-Fi wasn't very good, so I had to finish it on here. And I'll do that, as I promised, or whatever. Because I really like doing this anyways. Your sun in Gemini, and your Scorpio rising, and your moon is in Cancer, if anyone asks. So your rising sign is like your face and how you uh, approach people right away. It's what, how you react right away to things. Because the first house is ruled by Aries. It's the hero. It's the self. It's the I am. So yours is the I desire. You're like, I think, Gemini. Scorpio Rising's I desire. I moon in Cancer. I feel. Uh, your moon is your inner being. Your emotions. It's how you feel. And then your rising sign is how you, on the outside, your persona, like how you initiate talking to somebody. Like how you're acquainted with everybody in the world. Your persona right away. Uh, how you thrive off things. So you might be, you might come off as desirable, threatening, and you might be uh, loved or hated or whatever. Nothing really in between, but who knows? This is what they say. Uh, actually, Justin Bieber, he's a Pisces and he's Scorpio rising, too. And he's got Moon and Leo. Your Moon's in Cancer, so it's your mind and your emotions. Your inner self. So your mom probably mothered and nourished you, but also your Moon is in the 8th house, Gemini, which means... Your mom probably died, or uh, she's intense. And also, <clears throat> your eighth house is in Gemini, which means do not smoke cigarettes, because you might die of something with your lungs, and um, your arms, your hands. But it could, you know, your lung problem. It could kill you. Your lung problems, because it's your eighth house is in Gemini. Your eighth house is ruled by death, sex, transformation, and cult knowledge, and mysteries. So be careful with that. Your, your Saturn's in Aquarius, and it's also in the third house. Okay, your life lessons and discipline is Saturn. And uh, it's also your father, and it's authority figures. And it means that uh, your Saturn's in Aquarius, so your father either was this type of person, prejudiced, um, egotistical maniac, and told you not to wear weird clothes, not to talk to weird people, and then you either follow that and uh, and it also crumbled your ego. It would crumble your ego. And it's trying to make you have a healthy ego. But you probably went the right way because obviously I think you did. I think that you did go to your higher self just like Robin says. Because Aquarius does rule the higher self. And it means that it could give you all the knowledge um, Aquarius knows. And it can make you treat everyone equally and... And you would be the right kind of Aquarius on people. You'd rebel and be like, I am going to be myself and I'm going to wear whatever I want and not be afraid of humiliation and be my unique self and uh, talk to all walks of life and not be prejudiced or racist or whatever. And I'm sure you're not obviously deaf. And um, be social. And also it's in the third house, which is it could give you the opportunity to, to be a good writer or it could take it away from you. It could give you the opportunity to be a... Uh, public speaker, or it could take it away from you. And it could give you really good hands or hurt your hands. It could give you lessons on that. And it also mean, might mean that you might be a liar or a good storyteller. It might mean your dad was a liar or he made you lie for him or something like that. It doesn't mean this is all true. It just means this is what I see in a chart. You know what I mean? And it also means people tell you to shut up all the time, but you rebel and talk, and it can give you bad communication skills, or it can give you good communication skills. It's supposed to make you have better communication skills and be a better Gemini and all this stuff. Uh, it'll make you have more hard lessons on it than anybody else, if the restrictions. So, it's cool to have Saturn in the third house, because you could be a public speaker and good communicator and good writer and stuff like that. But it could also take it away from you, because that's what Saturn does. It's just, whatever. Your Mercury is in Taurus, so you have, that's how you speak, that's how you communicate and think. And your Mercury is in the uh, 
sixth house. So you might be, the sixth house is ruled by um, Virgo. It's your relationship with animals and it's your day-to-day -day routines. It's your, your perfectionist stuff. So you might be very analytical when you talk and when you talk, you have a powerful voice because it's in Taurus. Hello. <clears throat> your sixth house is in Taurus. So you, you are since sensational all every day and probably cook really good or something and think about food or something and you're the queen bee every day and six seventh house. your seventh house is actually in taurus too so you you might attract a whole bunch of tauruses and um that's my favorite sign <laughs> and um you might see tauruses as different from you because they're just too stable and you're like chaotic or something probably because you come off as chaotic as scorpio rising i don't know um, but secretly you are more calm and you are more Taurus-y because it's your shadow self. The seventh house is the world by Libra. It's the scales, the balance, you know, and it's a shadow self, which is a self that you might not like about other people that you keep on attracting. It might be, you want, you see them as opposite from you because of your rising sign or whatever, but it's people that you just keep on attracting. And, um, I don't know. Your fourth house is actually in Pisces, so your mama probably, you were probably really psychic, and things were just weird happening, and it means you're probably readable psychically, and, um, but everyone would see as that being weird, but you'd see it as normal, and you might be psych psychic. And your fourth, your tenth house is the public image. The fourth house is where the mom, the environment at your home that your mother gives you, and that you act like yourself at home. Like a Pisces. Ugh. Okay, your 10th house is in Virgo. So that's your public image, and it's how you advertise yourself, and that's how you want to be remembered. And it is um, Virgo, and it's just like Kim Kardashian has this placement. So like when you see her on TV, she people would see her as the Virgo self. But she's a Libra. And um, so you'll be like perfect when you come out and um, stuff. I don't know, um, your 11th house of friendship is, uh, uh, Libra, so you'll be very beautiful to your friends and stuff, and balanced and Libra-ly. Your 12th house is the spirit, and it's in Scorpio, um, and it rules your feet, okay, um, your Lilith is in Scorpio, so you rebel to be a Scorpio, and people don't want to see you be a Scorpio, but you do it anyways, you can proud and arrogant about it like it can mean stuff but and it's in the 11th house also you rebel to be the weirdo Aquarius cool higher self good person servant to others others and stuff because they're a little this is in the 11th house um and god i'm getting all scrambled up your venus is in taurus so you in a relationship you're the financial secure one. You're looking for others to be financially secure or something. And you might be looking for a sugar daddy. Which is just, could be just a joke. Because that's what I do. Okay. Five, six. The sixth house of day-to-day -day routines. You just want to look for somebody that you can handle every day. You don't care if they have money or not. But I guess you do at the same time. Or that you can be financially secure with and eat with or whatever. But it just means that you just want to... To be with something that you can actually deal day to day. Uh, and kind of be critical on them. And your Mars is in Leo, so you might be like a narcissist. Or you might be doing projects that involve being creative and expressional, very expressive. And and if someone uh, makes you mad, it would be about your ego or pride or something. And then you'd do something petty or something. I don't know. Is what Mars and Leo means in a way. Um, and it's also in the uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ninth house of your philosophy. So if someone makes you mad about your beliefs or something, I'm sure you're over it. I don't know. You might get mad about philosophy and how you believe in things or something. I don't know. Your ninth house is in Taurus. You believe in the value of relationships, money, and food and stuff. I don't know. I'm just saying stuff that I would say on anybody's shirt that looks like this, but I doubt you're any of the scrap, maybe. I don't even know. <laughs> Unless it's... I'm sure you're better than the scrap. Okay, but um, hopefully your eighth house 
Gemini does not kill you like that with long problems or something. That sucked. Anyways, um, eighth, ninth, shit. No, I'm wrong. Your ninth house is in Leo. Uh, I'm wrong about, okay, I'm just rushing too much. Okay, your ninth house is Leo, so what you don't like to be, no one will wants to disturb you when you're about to go to bed. Like, they'll treat you like the queen before you go to bed, so, uh, you might be a little threatening when you go to bed or something. You'll be like, uh, you know how people get, but you're, don't be bothered when you're going to sleep. Of course, nobody does, but, um, when you wake up, you become this Aquarius friendly, excited person when you wake up because your third house is in Aquarius, but also Saturn is in that third house, so it might have some restrictions on your, you waking up and being like a drill sergeant or something very serious when you wake up or something. I don't know. Ah, sorry. The third house is how you wake up, and it's ruled by Gemini. And yours is an Aquarius. And when you go to bed, yours is in Leo the Lion. Okay? Okay. And then, um, your Jupiter is in the fifth house. So you're lucky with holidays and get-togethers, and your fifth house is in Aries. So you get the point of the matter, you're like the hero in the parties, and you get to know yourself. Uh... Oh my god, um, okay, um, your Jupiter is in the sign, is the planet of luck, higher learning, and expansion. Anything you aim at, whatever sign yours is in, it, it, uh, gets through the target easier, because it expands the target, so you can shoot right through what you need, and yours is in Aries, which is survival, and being a leader, and the self, and the self-image, uh, and how you react and your athletic stuff, I guess, being the caveman, luck kind of stuff, whatever. Okay. And your philosophy, so you might have, uh, that old tales philosophy, and also a Leo's philosophy of expression, I guess. I don't know, this is too long, I guess, in, um, yeah, your sun sun is in the seventh house. So your sun is in the seventh house, the ego and your Gemini, but in the seventh house tour. So you will be beautiful and balanced and you'll attract a lot of people a lot, a lot like yourself anyways. Whatever. Your Neptune is in the twelfth house, Scorpio. Your Uranus is in the 11th house, Libra, so when you do things that are weird, it's just normal. Looks seems, looks normal. Like, instead of, like, off-putting and awkward, it would just look normal and be presented as decent, you know? Um, your Pluto is in the 10th house. Your secrets and stuff would be in the public's image. And how you isolate yourself, you like to be in the public's eye, I guess. Is what it might mean. And your North Node is in the 8th house. Um, cult knowledge and stuff like that. So your, your purpose is to die. I don't know. Because your North Node is your purpose. is what you lack. And it's what you came here for. To walk in the chaos. Be fearless. Be a house cult knowledge And you'll gain that through your whole life. When you're doing that through your purpose or something. And Gemini stuff. Which is, you know, being a public speaker and stuff is for your purpose and being a writer and stuff like that. That's what you came here to do and what you lack, but you will gain it and stuff. And that's the story of, that's glory of your bar chart besides your asteroids. Uh, I'm very losing it. I'm making a fool of myself, but I don't care. If I'm wrong or right, I'm just interpreting it in my own interpretation, and I wanted to roast it in for fun, but I got to know you a little bit, and all, you know, and I feel like a fool now, so, oh well, and plus my Wi-Fi was messing up, so, whatever, um, let me see here, I have to scroll down really long, oh, your Cafe Astrology, 
can calculate your chart if you want to look it up, but it don't show the asteroids. So I guess I can't figure that out in my in symbols. And I'll look, your asteroids are not on here, but okay. Okay, and that's a wrap. Toodles, whatever's clever. Thank you ever so kindly for the information. Just to look it up and stuff. Yeah. Am I on the house of the eighth house? Which means, yes, you can be a painter, a writer, and do not smoke. Take care of your lungs. Because the eighth house is death. Okay, and being a Scorpio rising makes you very, like, um, like, if you're at work, you'll be like, do not cuss. And then, you know, you'll be, like, appropriate or something with good manners and stuff. I don't know. Um, but off work, you know, you do go be yourself and stuff, whatever. And you'll be lucky with being yourself because your Jupiter is an Aries. Knowing who you are. Um, okay, well, toodles. <laughs>